Uh, good day. Hello, everybody. My name is Kevin Bidet. I am helping the Order of the Blessed Virgin Mary of Mercy. And my guest tonight is Father Daniel Bowen. And Father Daniel is a, uh, he's a friar and a priest of the Order of the Blessed Virgin Mary of Mercy. Uh, they're, uh, they're an in international uh, uh, order that goes back eight centuries. Uh, and here in the United States, they're in four different states, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, and Florida. And uh, Father Daniel is also the vocation director of, the, of this area in the United States. So, Father Daniel, uh, welcome, and would you please lead us in prayer? Thanks you, thank you, Kevin. Uh, be glad to, absolutely. We should begin as we begin all good things in prayer. So let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Direct, we beseech you, O Lord, our actions by your holy inspirations, and grant that we may carry them out with your gracious assistance, that every prayer, word, and work of ours may begin always with you, and through you be happily completed. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name Good. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Okay, Father Daniel, thank you very much. And so tonight's topic is pilgrimages. Uh, what is a pilgrimage, and why should we make them? So could you explain, please explain a little bit about what you know about pilgrimages, Father? Okay, so... Um, I'll start with the text and work off of that, although I've got a lot of different ideas. So here's a really good book. If you, uh, well, this will be backwards probably in the thing, but I'll, uh, uh, I can uh, certainly uh, get the book put in another. Well, no, it is right, isn't it? Can you read Looks that? Looks good, yeah. I can what read it. Say? Looks fine. Introduction, Introduction to, to Catholicism. Catholicism, a complete course. All right. So this is a wonderful textbook that's put out in the Didache series by... Oh. The Midwest Theological Forum. I, I know them well. They're here in Chicago. So not that I'm doing a plug, but I'm happy to do a plug. So anyway, again, just to kind of, as a launching pad, if you go into this book, again, which looks to give, again, Introduction to Catholicism, on Chapter 4, uh, it speaks on the church. And in there, on page 63, gives us some vocabulary. And one of those vocabulary and definitions is pilgrimage, pilgrimage, and it says pilgrimage, journey to a sacred place undertaken as an act of religious devotion. The purpose may be to venerate a certain saint or ask some spiritual favor, beg for a physical cure, or perform an act of penance, or express thanks or fulfill a promise. So this is really a very good definition. Probably if we've been in the church since we've been young or uh, for some time, we, we hear the reference of that we are a pilgrim people, right? So there's always a movement in our life. In fact, if you look at uh, Mark, the Gospel of Mark, uh, the most repeated phrase throughout this very short and fast-moving gospel is on the way. Jesus is on the way. We're all on our way. Our home, since the day of our baptism, is not the residence that we live in presently or will live anywhere here, but our ultimate home is heaven. So there, in a sense, right, we are all on pilgrimage and making a movement, right? And it is a holy movement as we are made the image and likeness of God and should be loving him and our neighbor. And again, it's a continual work in our life of a movement, a pilgrimage, we could say, from our initial uh, state of being, which was selfishness, and a movement to selflessness, the ability to be like Christ, one who dies for themselves out of love for others. So in a broad scheme of things, right, pilgrimage, and it's very Catholic to be a pilgrim. But again, looking to this definition, which comes right out of this beautiful, wonderful textbook, which I do recommend, especially if you're going to be teaching the faith and for your own knowledge, Journey to a sacred place undertaken as an act of religious devotion. So big picture of pilgrimage, but here talking about an earthbound pilgrimage. Again, 
not a vacation, but something done as a means of religious devotion. Again, particularly as is mentioned to venerate a certain saint. We know that certain places and areas are named after, for instance, Our Lady of Lords is named for Our Lady, but a particular uh, moment of where Our Lady appeared to St. Bernadette in Lords, France, uh, or uh, up in Canada, St. Anne de, de, de Pre. There is a giant shrine up there dedicated to the mother of Mary or the grandmother of Jesus. Um, so oftentimes people make a movement to these particular places because of those saints or for, uh, in a sense, looking to make that pilgrimage. But it, uh, again, asking for a favor, a physical cure, a spiritual cure, performing an act of penance, right? Maybe I did something wrong and I just know, I mean, back in the old days, it would often be assigned. Your penance will be that you will do this more than just an Our Father and Hail Mary. But your penancing might be for you to journey over to here you know, however long it's going to take as a way of saying, God, I am truly sorry and I mend my life. Uh, or again, expressing thanks for fulfilling a promise. You know, it, when, when we have somebody that's come through and we say, hey, I promise you, if, if you lend me a hundred bucks, you know, I'll give you a, I'll give you a hundred plus interest, right? You make a commitment, you're going to follow through. Well, religiously, there should be that same thing. God, you know, if you come through on this, you know, again, your will always, but if you come through on this, I will promise to make a journey to the church, you know, or the saint come through where I promise to come to your church and, and make, and do that yearly on the anniversary of whatever this event or thing might be. So again, it's something more than, than just um, uh, something that's out of being done for just a vacation or a getaway, but there's a movement in it, in a sense of a commitment, your commitment to, to Christ and to the church and to the communion of saints that we're a part of. So uh, I think that kind of gives a good, a good overall kind of view of it. Um, a lot of places where there've been pilgrimages, uh, and, and again, it's, it's something that's not new for us as Christianity. In fact, it, it, it often comes out of the, uh, from our tradition of Judaism, okay? Very often, right? Again, the chosen people, were on movement, right? They were, we were leaving slavery of Egypt, right? And you're going to the promised land, right? So again, our movement from sinfulness to saintliness, there's a movement constantly. Yeah, uh, yeah. So there was I, always. I have a question, Father. You know, oh, the yeah, the, sure. um, the time in the life of Christ when when Jesus was lost in the temple. Uh, the, the Holy Family was traveling to Jerusalem. Was that a pilgrimage or is, was this an annual trip that they went on, you know? Well, really, yeah, kind of both, right? Because part of Judaism is that you would be making a trip to Jerusalem yearly. That was part of what you were to do, uh, if at all possible, you know? Uh, and so they were fulfilling that that obligation of, of Jews in that time. So again, it was it was not done for vacation, but for religious purposes, you know. And it, you know, there's still a semblance of that, right? Because again, we as faithful, devout Catholics know that every Sunday we are to journey to our nearby to a Catholic church, right? Mm. Preferably, of course, our parish. But if we are on vacation. That does not absolve us from our obligation to go and be present, uh, right? Uh, yeah, our yeah. Sunday obligation. Uh, and right. so, you know, th that's part of it as well, right? It's part of our commitment to, to God. And, our, and mm, you know, you hate to say obligation. Oh, you got to do it. Oh, I got to do it, right? But really, it's, it's about growing the relationship. Again, once we've been baptized, we are in a new relationship with God. Not only are we in his image, but we are now in his likeness. His likeness has been impressed upon us. We are sons and the son of Jesus, so that God the Father truly is our father. And that's also how and why Jesus is able to give his mother to us and say, you know, behold your mother, behold your son. It's, it's more than just kind of a figurative thing. And it really should be a very serious commitment for us, right? Honestly, if we thought about what happens at Mass, right? It's not entertainment, folks. Um, we are there to drink and eat his body and blood. You're drinking his blood. You know, it's, it's a deep, profound 
movement. And again, part of religious, but it's about the relationship that we that we have to God. There's nowhere we're going to be able to love God and love our neighbor as we are called, commanded really to do, and should want to do, um, than to be making these movements. And so, you know, there's yeah. even movements or a pilgrimage sense of it in our liturgy. There is an, a procession, right, that, that yeah. the priest makes with the servers. So there's always kind of a, a movement, and there should be in our, to remind us of the movement, again, from selfishness to selflessness, mm-hmm. our movement from here on earth to heaven. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, know Father, I, I just, uh, on that note here that uh, um, you mentioned the Mass and, you know, going to receiving uh, our Lord in Holy Communion, uh, and of course, you're making a movement to the altar, uh, but but it's also a sacrament, and and the sacraments do play a role in a pilgrimage, don't they? Typically, they uh, because you're sometimes you're expected to go to confession. Is that right? Oh, How absolutely right. You know, by our our church rules, of course, we are obli- obligated to, of course, to uh, to attend or be actively participating in mass every Sunday in the Holy Day of Obligations, but the church also does have the precepts that we must receive the Holy Eucharist at least once a year and confess our sins at least once a year, you know? Uh, Obviously, we should be doing that more frequently, right? Especially in our modern day and age where we have churches, you know, closely nearby to us, many of them, especially if we live in a a city, um, to to make use uh, of the sacramental grace. Uh, yeah. That is that is so lavishly and available to us. Right, right. So, so if you're on a pilgrimage, I was going to say, uh, then, uh, you know, do, do these tours or the pilgrimages, I mean, if on the organized pilgrimages, uh, are, I, I'm sure there's a possibility for mass. And of course, many times you're with a priest. Uh, and, and so then are you expected to receive or attend mass a lot or do you should you expect awesome yeah. things to happen at a pilgrimage yeah uh, well i'll, I'll share a little bit of a story i've been blessed to lead one pilgrimage so thus far in my in my priestly career so my last assignment was at a parish in florida and i was the parochial vicar which allowed for me to possibly have some freedom to do this well in talking with many of the parishioners they shared with us how they had they had wanted to go to ewtn Everybody hopefully knows what EWTN is, the, the television station, well, the, the place where it was founded in Alabama. And uh, they were saying, oh, well, we tried to do that, and the bus broke down, and we couldn't do it, and it didn't happen. So I'm like, well, let's make it happen. Why don't we? So we talked to the pastor. He's like, yeah, okay, that's fine. Let's do it. So we organized the thing, and, and I can remember, you know, we're going to make this a pilgrimage. It's not going to be – so. And we had kind of an organizational meeting. I remember, you know, we would advertise the thing in the bulletin about this pilgrimage that we would be making and determine the best time would be during the week because that would work best for the most of people, maybe not everyone. And I remember the organizational meeting held in the hall and lots of people came, lots and lots and lots of people. And right off the bat, I told them, okay, first thing you need to all realize, everyone, this is going to be a pilgrimage. This will not be a vacation. And I promptly handed out to everyone a a novena to the Holy Spirit. And I said, you will begin praying this novena because this is, this is going to be a prayerful experience. And and that's how we set up. And probably half the people decided not to go forward on the trip. And it may not have just been that it could have been for other reasons, but I know it ended up being everyone that was on the trip. The expectation was set that this is going to be a prayerful experience. And that is how we set it out. So, Again, it was for us, uh, that journey from Florida to, to Alabama uh, was a 10-hour trip. And so for the 10-hour trip I had coordinated, made copies of the Liturgy of the Hours. So we would be praying, you know, office of readings, morning prayer, evening prayer, midday prayer, night prayer. And, and I also brought some faith-filled uh, movies, uh, you know, good Catholic films, in, including one that is on the... Uh, the the the, Car- the Carthusian monks, you know, so a nice collection of films that are that I knew that I had seen before that are Catholic that are inspiring and spiritual. Because you know, when you're driving a long trip like that, you know, they've got the movie kind of thing you can pop it in. And I didn't want it to be, you know, us watching Home Alone or something. You know, I mean, I yeah. want something that would be inspiring. Sure. And, and, and uh, also some some talks, but you know, by by priests. And it, and uh, I, it really set the tone, you know. So yeah. we did arrive. 
that was the expectation. And it, once we arrived to, in time to check in our hotel, the next morning we were up early to arrive at EWTN for their mass. So we were able to be at the televised mass. I was blessed to can celebrate, which is wonderful and beautiful. And the rest of the day was, of course, at the station, which was spiritual talks, uh, a little tour of the place. Uh, so, you know, and then for the return trip home, of course, also similar kind of thing, you know, where we were uh, having the prayer and that, and, and it, it really did set the the pace. You know, I think everyone kind of got the idea we're, we're going to this religious place, you know, where the body of Mary Mother Angelica is interred, the founders of EWTN, giant, beautiful, um, almost like medieval looking kind of uh, a church uh, that's been constructed or a minor basilica. Uh, and, and then of course a TV studio, which is about half hour away. And it was a very moving, beautiful experience. It had been on one of my bucket lists to make that because EWTN yeah. for me personally uh, was something that really introduced me to the, I'm a convert. So part of my learning about the faith was watching EWTN. My godmother would have it on frequently and I'd watch it and pray the rosary with the sisters. Uh, so for me, it was a way of kind of giving back to you, connect, making a connection. Uh, yeah. So being able to pray at the tomb of Mary Mother Angelica to, to uh, you know, pray, uh, you know, or, or be in the presence of her sisters, right, that are obviously on the other side of the wall because they're cloister contemplative, yeah. you know, to meet some of the friars there that I've seen on TV uh, to, yeah. to celebrate them was all very meaningful and beautiful. And they have a beautiful and, chapel there, don't they? the gorgeous chapel absolutely. with a lot of gold yes. uh, statues. and, and uh, Yes. Uh, she'd, know, uh, she'd gone to Spain to have it purposely modeled after something that was, you know, 500 or how many years because she uh, wanted to be very Catholic and, and realizing it'd be a place of pilgrimage for people, you know, yeah. and conversions could be. But again, this idea of pilgrimage is healthy and beautiful for us. And we should be doing this, honestly. Again, yeah. it's come to the tradition, you know, the uh, part of the Crusades. I mean, you hear the whole thing, and I'm not going to get into all that because we're not doing a history lesson here. But the Crusades were a pushback because what Christians would do is they would make a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. They yeah. wanted to go to the place where, you know, where Jesus was crucified. They wanted yeah. to, to, to walk the way of the cross, to draw close to our Lord, right? Because he wasn't just a, it wasn't just like an idea or a philosophy, yeah. but he actually walked the earth and to be in those places or to go to, to Nazareth, right? And, you know, to be in Bethlehem, yeah. to be in these places where he existed. And so that's that, you know, because uh, of Islam uh, taking charge and they were persecuting and, often Preventing killing the people on people the pilgrimages. Not. And so yeah. you know, this, the, the, a lot of the crusades was a pushback against that. We wanted yeah. to be sure that people could, you know, uh, get, get their pilgrimage in again. Right. You know, you know on that father, uh, I was reading a novel uh, by, I think his name is Alfred Dugan. And he, it, it's a story of a pilgrimage that goes all the way to Jerusalem, but it's the military were like accompanying the pilgrims and they were protecting them and riding with them. And, and, uh, what struck me is that uh, it, it took such a long time to make a pilgrimage. I mean, if, if you're traveling from uh, the middle of Europe to Jerusalem, I mean, how could you take out that much time from your from from your schedule for all of that? You know, yeah, it must have taken months. Oh, right, absolutely, yeah. Without you know, if you were walking, surely, right? And even if you were yeah. just you know taking a burrow or an ox or a horse, still, right? Yeah. So it was a you know, the only kind of maybe the semblance that you get akin to that today might be those that make the way of Compostela, which is still very, and has become even popular again with many people today uh, in Spain, making that route, walking that route. And, and yeah. uh, really the destination think, being Santiago. Father, do you think it's kind of a, the, the trip there, the pilgrimage, uh, a lot of people take it for non-religious reasons, I think. I mean, do you think and I guess it's just a thing to do. It's kind of fun. You know, the young people uh, know that there'll be, be a lot of other young people on. Uh, do you think God will bless them in some way just by going on the trip? Oh, yeah, absolutely right. Sure. I mean, you invite your friends to mass, right? And, and they're not Catholic. Is that not a good thing for them? Is it? Are they not going to have perhaps some experience? Me personally, it led to my, my conversion of becoming a Catholic. My girlfriend who was Catholic and who I who was not she insisted that I go with her to church, which in a sense was, you're going to go on pilgrimage with me, right? She uh, wasn't yeah. or maybe thinking of that, but I'm making the journey. You know, you know, she's either picking me up or I'm going to get her and we're driving 
to the nearby or to her parish and walking into the church and being present at the yeah. holy sacrifice. And and then also she introduced to me besides that, you know, a little pil another pilgrimage, which was a uh, a little uh, building next over where they had adoration, where we went to make a little pilgrimage, right? Many one as it might be to spend time in the presence of our Eucharistic Lord. So very, uh, you know, again, pilgrimage, we can think of it as being a long drawn out journey and it can be that, but it also can be a very short journey, you know, but it is an important aspect of our faith that's in our tradition. Um, you know, as Catholics, we, we, we should be doing that, right? Yeah. But, well, uh, what should people do, Father, if they want, you know, uh, if they can't travel all the way to Rome or, or the Holy Land, uh, just making a local pilgrimage? I mean, that's uh, absolutely right. Join one, or should you just go on your by yourself, yeah. or, or or just find a friend, or just what? Yeah, I would say, you know, ideally, you know, what would be what what probably we all want to do at some point, especially as Roman Catholics, if we are Latin, right, is to make a journey to Rome. And probably some of your best ways as far as cost wise and best experience is going to be going with a Catholic tour group, you know, where there's going to be a priest that's going to journey with you. And they'll bring you to the sites, they'll say mass, it'll be set up particularly as a pilgrimage, it's a package deal, you probably got to save up three, 4,000 bucks, but they'll take care of everything, they'll get you there, right, they'll take care of everything. And it'll be a very beautiful experience. But, um, you know, obviously, we not everyone can afford that, right? Or maybe our health wouldn't permit for it. But uh, certainly, there's, you know, there's, there's ways that we can still make or have a sense of that. Uh, for example, uh, there was a, a, a tradition, right, in Holy Thursday, if you lived in Rome, to visit seven churches in Rome, okay? And that's... Uh -huh. uh, so obviously, well, we're not all going to be able to go to Rome on Holy Thursday, but what has become is that's been transferred, uh, at least here in the United States. Uh, there was a tradition, some people still keep it, it's a good one, on Holy Thursday after attending the Mass of the Lord's Supper, uh, to then actually get in your car and drive to, to seven other nearby Catholic churches and visit their altar of repose. Yeah, uh, we did so that in Chicago. We we did we uh, I did that when I lived in Chicago, and there, there are certain churches. Well, a lot of them are open on Holy Thursday, and uh, they're, you know, beautiful churches. Yeah. And, I mean, I was amazed that there were so many of them, ornate and, you know, built like around 1900, and and they just went all out for for, for the beauty of these churches. I'm sure you have them there in uh, Cleveland and Philadelphia. As well. it, it, it's a great tradition, again, and it is a sense of the pilgrimage, and, and of course, doing so right as we're entering into the most holiest time of the church, which is the Easter Triduum, right? The preparation, uh, entering Holy Thursday, Good Friday, right? Uh, Easter, Holy Saturday, Easter Sunday, right? Which is the, the pinnacle, especially the Vigil Mass uh, uh, of Easter, of Easter, which is, you know, that is it. So a beautiful thing. But again, if we can't do the trips now, so we can think of some of our ancestors that left Europe or not everyone, of course, but a good number that came to this new world. And again, they had the tradition of making these pilgrimages, but it was be impossible for them because in those days they came here often with just the shirt on their back, <laughs> maybe their family and maybe a trunk at the most and didn't have the money to, to necessarily buy another uh, steamship ticket to travel all the way back. You know, it just wouldn't be yeah. possible, you know. So this is where the idea of having national shrines came about. And the church mm -hmm. extended this where we could, you know, since we cannot travel to Lourdes, France, we can have a, a shrine built here in the United States uh, that is similar to that. And that will, uh, the church then gave the same indulgences. If you go to this shrine here, uh, there's one here, for instance, in the Diocese of Cleveland, which is the National Shrine of Our Lady of Lords, and it actually has little uh, pieces of the rock uh, where Our Lady was standing when she appeared to Bernadette, and and then they have water that runs over the rock into a little pool, so in a sense of kind of creating kind of a mini little Lords France, and the church provided for, if you go to this place, it's the same as if you go to Lord's France. Hmm. Oh so my the same my. indulgences or the same benefits uh, that are uh, there. The church is, and they did that purposely to encourage the pilgrimage, to continue to honor that sense of doing that, but to be practical about it so that, yeah, you, I can't make it all the way Lord's France, France, but here is yeah. a, a way of doing it in a similar way. You know, yeah. whether we're making these journeys to, 
to Guadalupe, right, in Mexico, or Lourdes, yeah. France, or, or Fatima, Portugal, or Assisi, Italy, right? Um, yeah. uh, I, I think in Mexico, I, I think the Mexicans do make pilgrimages. And, and I knew that, uh, I heard the story that uh, so a group I, of people I knew went with Father Fessio, you know, I'm, I'm sure you know him from Ignatius, uh, Ignatius Press. And, you know, all these people were rushing up to him with with Coke bottles in their hands and filled with water because they wanted, they knew, they found out he was a priest. And so they went in to bless their, their water, you know, and that's, that's a nice story. Yeah, but, but they, you know, what Lupe has like, I don't know, like a million or more people every uh, December, when is it? December 12th uh, for the feast there. And, oh, yes. you know, in what can we do in the U S to bring some of that back? It would be just to do it. Right. And invite a friend. There's no, you know, find out what's nearby. Again, we've got the technology on the computer. Find out where the minor basilicas are. You know, find out where there's a, a shrine. Usually that they're usually out in rural areas, whatnot, and make the journey or find out if, you know, any of the parishes nearby or somewhere in the diocese are, are making one. Uh, or again, just get your family in the car or just grab a friend and just head on out there, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and say, you know, we're going to do this, you know, pray the rosary on the, on the trip over there. Uh, and when you arrive, you know, it, just be present in the site, try to make room for silence and reflection and, uh, uh, and see what's located there. Right. Yeah. Uh, again, I, I, I know that uh, I, I understand that you can even make an app. Uh, an afternoon pilgrimage, you know, just yes. pray the rosary on the way there and, and then while you're there and on the way back, you know, to maybe a, uh, a statue of the Blessed Mother in your parish church or another church, you know. That's right. That's right. So, or on a saint's, if you have a devotion to a particular saint, and we should, the communion of saints is, is an important reality for us. These are the people that help us along the way. Uh, why not on their feast day? I mean, Ideally, you know, on their feast day, you make arrangements to go to mass on that day of their feast day. And, you know, obviously your local parish would be would be OK, fine and good. But maybe there is a parish that's named after that saint in your diocese. Maybe go to have mass there uh, or or, you know, or make a visit to that church on that day. Do you know, that makes yeah. it extra special. You know, yeah. maybe it might be a, a, an hour long trip or maybe I got a journey in the diocese next next door because it's not in this parish. Um, or I'm sorry, not in this uh, diocese, but it, it'll be, well be worth it. And again, you do it. You're not look. You're not impressing God. Right. OK. Mm -hmm. But it, it's for us, for ourselves to help us. You know, again, if I'm going to drive an hour to get, you know, get a sale on something at the mall, you know. <laughs> Surely something religious, which again, touches on the transcendent and the beyond should be a higher priority for us. Yeah, uh, yeah. When we go out of ourselves is where, where we can really experience great growth and renewal. And we need those things. And they're yeah. good for us. You know, I think it's special that Catholics have this idea of that, that certain places are, are holy. And yeah. uh, this physical reality there. Uh, is a dimension that we often forget, I think, in our, with our Western minds, that I, I think our, our Western thinking often separates the physical from the spiritual. And, and there's that, not, and, you know. And, and some of it is the Protestant influence. And again, I'm not against our Protestant brothers and sisters, but they have edited, they have edited the fullness of the faith, okay? And in many cases, by just paring down our sacra seven sacraments into one, they've lost some of the tangibility. They've maybe over-spiritualized some things. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and we have a tendency that way because we are in a land that is largely in origin of, of a Protestant kind of feel. And then, yeah. of course, it's a capitalistic country. So materialism is, you know, is often seen as a, a different kind of way. But, you know, with, in Catholicism, you've got the proper balance of the faith and the reason of the, the tangible and the intangible. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, so it's not evil to, you know, to, to have an image, you know, that reminds you of somebody. It's not that's, you know, worship idols, right? But we're physical are, people and we have senses, reminders to we have us, right? five senses. Right? Yeah. And yeah. we're fed the so, Eucharist, right? There's the, the you know, it, we encounter Christ in the sacraments, uh, anointings. It, we're always very tangible and, and it's mm -hmm. meant to be that way. So yeah. our whole lives should be that, right? Yeah. Uh, it's better to, it's better like to go to mass. I, I think a, a lot of people have lost the sense of uh, being present physically at, and in a church going to mass rather than just watching it on TV, you know, cause you, 
there's a special presence of God there in that church, yes. in that building. Uh, and, That's right. Uh, and, you know, some people say, well, I'll just stay home and watch it on, t- on YouTube, whatever. It's, it's not quite the same, you know. No, it's, no. I mean, it, it, again, if you're, if you're physically unable or, you know, during our time of the COVID pandemic, obviously there, there wasn't the ability. Okay, fine. You know, but the, again, you can make a spiritual communion, as it were, if it were a mass. But there is no substitute for the real presence and being in that real presence. Right. And that's the reason why the church does have us to make that pilgrimage every Sunday or Holy Day to the church. Even if we're not going to receive the Blessed Sacrament, because if we're not Catholic yet, or if we are, we, we have mortal sin that needs to be confessed, still we need to go to be in that real presence of Christ and to be in the presence of our fellow believers. It's an, an important thing, right? And it's part of that whole uh, movement. But those are just like yeah. little kind of mini pilgrimages. But um, there should be more than that. Again, we should we should we just be satisfied with the minimum, Kevin? I mean, if you know me, you probably know the answer already. You know, like if I was going to propose to a woman and say, "I'd like you to marry me," uh, how many times exactly do I have to say, "I love you"? Could I say that like once a year? Would that be okay? Right. Like, right, right. is she going to go or bite for that? I don't think so. Right. No, no, uh, right. So the minimum is really like, if you want to get a job, right. Are you just going to, well, you know, I'll, you know I won't put on my best suit, you know, maybe I won't put makeup on and, you know, I'll show up for the interview. That should mean something, right. You know, yeah. but, or, and I might be late. You know, no, you want to, you're going to, you're not going to do the minimum. You do the best. You put your, you know, and, and it should be, why should our faith be any different than things that we really want to succeed at? If I want to be the best football or basketball star, I got to be out there practicing and and doing my best, you know, if I'm not, why would I be on the team? Why would anybody want me to be on the team? You know, Uh, and how are we really going to succeed or do well? The same thing for our faith life. I don't know why we suddenly think that somehow that needs to be different. (laughs) I mean, our Lord will meet us where we're at. Right. Okay. But there should be a movie. He doesn't want us to stay on the bench. He wants us right. to get up and get out on the field and not just be running the game, but win the game. You know, yeah. you know, Paul, exactly. even St. Paul bring, brings it up, right. To win the race, yeah. right. Run the you race, know? run the good race. Yeah. Yeah. That's we, it. yeah. We should always be open to me. It seems like it's a growing in God's love, you know, where you, you yeah. become closer and closer to God, more like him more re- reflecting his, his attributes and it's a, so it's, it's all about relationship right if you yeah. if you want to fall in love and, and be loved you got to spend time with others right and again pope francis has been very wonderful in reminding us you know sometimes it's just wasting time together right again pilgrimage may be in some practical ways well, it's a waste of time right but but in a spiritual reality and just good for us it does the soul good just to go do that with somebody bring grab somebody and go make the movement just that experience you know we can we can think of the secular world with the road trip right how fun that can be when we're younger we grab our friends once we've got our driver's license and oh let's go let's make a run we're gonna go do this crazy uh, kind of adventure <laughs> Uh, we shouldn't lose that, you know, and, yeah. and the, the yeah. spiritual pilgrimage will, will fit the bill and in a way that goes just beyond just uh, the road trip, but uh, but a, a trip that's leading us towards heaven, right, in our goal, in our home. Uh, so yeah, take, take a risk to go outside of ourselves, to put up with yeah. inconvenience. Uh, for you know for for something that's that's much better you know and, and I'll, into... I'll share another example okay now some of us uh obviously as faithful catholics we uh, should be pro-life meaning that we believe that all human life needs to be rejected from conception to natural death no exceptions so one big event that's been going on in the united states since abortion has been legal to ni- legalized in 1973 following supreme court cases of Uh, Roe versus Wade and Doe versus Bolton, uh, there's been a march for life. And people will come to this march for life. Now, honestly, and and for those that kind of get it and and you get into it, that's a pilgrimage that you're making. Uh It's a prayer rally, yes, and it can be a political kind of thing. But the, the main point is that it's a pilgrimage. I'm going, there have been people that have been murdered from abortion, right? Killed. I mean, this maybe my phraseology might be offensive to some, but there is a life that existed that was given, gifted to, to existence by God and others chose to eradicate it. There should be a sorrow for that and a penance for that. 
and there should be also the desire for us to make it an unthinkable thing. So a, a movement like there. And so yeah, again, and, I've been uh, blessed to go and make that journey to Washington D.C. I've, uh, you know, I made it several times also, and I, uh, I, I remember th that it was quite difficult. I mean, it's rather arduous. It's many miles. Uh, mm -hmm. It's often, you know, it's hold right in the middle of, of winter in January, oh, and yeah. I, I get cold very easily. It's, it's uh, when I went, there was snow and ice on the street, and and just uh, very uncomfortable. So this is this is one of the difficulties that you often put up with a, on a yeah. pilgrimage, you know. And there's prayer, and you know, what are you going to do walking for like what, what is it like two hours, you know? And well, you you pray the rosary, you know. Yeah. You could spend your time chit-chatting with people, but after a while, there's not much to say. So what better thing can you do than to pray for the unborn children? You, you, you offer it up, right? And, and every yeah. time that I've made that journey, and I know it'll be another case, because I consider it really a pilgrimage, I've always got to put people in my path that I met somewhere in there, whether it was getting on the, uh, the, the Washington subway or or in the march, or I just looked over and all of a sudden there's this person, different people that I know that God brought us together to be here. Like, it, it's amazing, really. Uh, people on the pilgrimage, friends, other people. Or somebody new or something, or somebody that inspired me or I inspired them. There's, there's, there's total God moments when one makes a pilgrimage, when one commits to making it a pilgrimage and, and following through on it. And one great example is that March for Life. I, I have never made that and it's been times where like oh, i don't know if i really want to go it's tough because you once you get older sometimes the excitement is wanes a little bit but uh after i had gotten into the thing uh at the end of the day i was a whole different frame of mind yeah and just amazing god moments occurred yeah. about completely and it's, that's uh, why it's, it's, it's well a, worth making it's amazing how you yeah you could strike up conversations with complete strangers and many yes. times you find that they're you know they believe just like you do and then they you know, their, their own life, their friends, their faith, you know, it, it's like you, you just have this commonality with, with people whom you've never met. And it's, it's just fun, you know, and you're, you're Absolutely. suffering together and experiencing it together. Yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, like you're saying, a lot of God moments there. So it's, I, I'm, I'm going to have to make a note of that. Maybe we'll, <laughs> maybe we'll go to it next year. I'll take a family member or two. So well, um, we're doing it. And again, there's a lot of groups that will, charter buses so you don't have uh -huh. to you know you can just sign up for and get on board the bus again it could be duff kids can it could be right like a 15 hour trip if they go directly straight across and back but yep. again you know you kind of prepare hey this is gonna, there's going to be some hardship but i offer it up you know for the you know yeah. for, the, for the good uh for the good yeah. god right he's that's, worthy that's, of everything right everything's the gift to us yeah, so again pilgrimage and uh watching our time i don't want to make sure we don't uh, lose run out of time but um yeah, the, yeah again yeah. pilgrimage is an important uh, part of our of our aspect of our life it's our it, it is christianity is a pilgrimage right mm -hmm. but we but we purposely want to be going uh, to make these kind of things right yeah uh, to, to uh to grow exactly. our faith right yeah. and to be inspired and to inspire others again a lot of times those pilgrimages it's not just about you right <laughs> sometimes yeah. it's about other people that you'll encounter on the way or at the place um, and, and, you know, so it's very, a very good thing. So, well, like you were saying, we should wrap this up father. And, uh, can you stay, say a short prayer and then, uh, I'll end the recording and then maybe we could talk a little bit longer. Okay. Okay. That's that good. Sounds, sounds right. like a good plan. Uh, right. I'll give a blessing as well. Let's begin in okay. the name of the father, son, and the Holy spirit. spirit. Amen. Amen. Good and gracious Lord. We thank you for the gift of this time that we've had together speaking about the topic of pilgrimage. Uh, again, we are a pilgrim people, Lord God, a pilgrim people that are headed towards heaven. This is where you desire us all to be. And Lord God, you often give so many opportunities for us to repent and convert when we've lost the way or perhaps forgotten that concept of the movement. And that this is all about relationship. First and foremost with you, the holy ones, and with each other, right? Saints in the making. And so, Lord, we ask you to continue to bless uh, as we, uh, each and every one of us, whether uh, watching now live or watching this as a recording, as they continue to uh, open their hearts more to you and the plan that you have traced for our lives. 
We ask this all in the name of your beloved Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Go in peace. Thank you, Father Daniel. Well, oh, we'll, we'll see you next time here. Okay. Sounds